Welcome back. You're watching a newsroom special, uh, which is concentrating on uh, the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor and the 10 years of this very important flagship project. Let me begin our conversation with our guests on this side of the border. And our first guest, of course, is uh, Dr. Fazal Rahman. Dr. Saab, uh, the expression deeper than the oceans, mm -hmm. higher than the mountains, sweeter than honey, has been very uh, routinely used to describe the relationship between Pakistan and China. How has the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor supported this slogan? Well, I think certainly there's a background to all these uh, cliches which are being used to describe Pakistan-China relationship. And there is a long history of bilateral relations and uh, uh, the testing times that the two countries have stood by each other during those testing times. And uh, I think it's uh, not at all out of place to suggest all these things to describe Pakistan-China relations. And as far as CPEC is concerned, I think uh, China, uh, when announced uh, Belt and Road Initiative, uh, CPEC was technically signed one month before. Uh, the signing of or announcement of the BRI. So that shows that you know there has been more deeper understanding based on our traditional friendship uh, that led us to creation of this uh, uh, CPEC which became eventually part of the BRI uh, as a flagship project of the BRI. So I think that it, it's, it's very much reflective of this traditional relationship, the traditional friendship that the two countries have been enjoying. And uh, I think that uh, the progress on CPEC uh, has been uh, one of the, uh, you know, uh, demonstration of this, uh, you know, special uh, relationship, special friendship uh, that both the countries have indulged into uh, constructing this uh, specific corridor for the benefit of the two countries. And I think that uh, this is going to go a long way. It's a long-term project. And Pakistan and China both will stand to benefit from this. All right. Dr. Talat Shabir, how, in your point of view, has CPEC transformed Pakistan's infrastructure, economic landscape? What, in your point of view, are the economic implications of the CPEC logistics and trade hubs such as the Gowadar port in Pakistan? Uh, when you go back to 2013 and 2014, <clears throat> when CPEC was initiated, we, we see that uh, there was a very trying time for Pakistan. There was a lot of terrorism uh, going on in, the, in our country. A lot of investment was actually on, on when, because uh, not only uh, that we had a decrease in investment FDIs in, in those times. China was the country who came to our help, who came to rescue with a big bang like uh, CPEC. So, uh, you know, we had problems with regards to energy shortages. We had problems of infra infrastructure. When You know, whenever you want to look at industrial development of a country, you have to see energy and logistics. And for logistics, you need to have infrastructure. So infrastructure and energy were the two main pillars, first two pillars on which the CPEC was built. And today, when uh, 10 years later, we see there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, we can count on a lot of infrastructure built like, uh, you know, uh, uh, around uh, 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 and similarly energy needs have been met and uh <coughs> there's a lot of energy, uh, more than uh, more than 10,000 megawatt has been put into national grid which has actually resolved our energy problems. So these two first two pillars which were very important to boost our uh, industry uh, were in the phase, first phase of CPEC. So uh, 10 years later, we see a lot of improvement, and I think we can rightly be proud of <coughs> what w proud of uh, what we have achieved in CPEC. So uh, when we talk of uh, you know implications, for example, uh, one of the important thing was job creation that we expected mm. from CPEC, and as I speak, uh, nearly two hundred thousand jobs, direct or indirect, have been created uh, because of CPEC, and uh, you know a uh, lot more uh, job creation potential is there. Uh, the moment we move forward with industrial uh, development and uh, relocation of industry, uh, which is phase two. And of course, and uh, looking at the fourth component, third component was industry, fourth component was Gwadar. Uh, we see a uh, airport coming up in Gwadar and it is going to be operationalized soon, and which is going to be the Asia's biggest, uh, uh, largest airport. So I think there's going to be a lot of activity in Gwadar in, in, in coming, in coming uh, months. Uh, that we see. And all this has been, possi been possible because of CPEC. All right. Dr. Fazlur Rahman, uh, uh, 
Dr. Talat pointed out towards energy as being one of the key pillars of CPEC. I'd like to point out towards the 14 power high generation projects with a total installed capacity of 8,020 megawatts and one HVDC transmission line with evacuation capacity of 4,000 megawatts that have, been, have achieved their commercial operation. I'd like to understand more on how CPEC has transformed the energy landscape as far as Pakistan is concerned. Well, actually, if you, as uh, Dr. Talat has mentioned, if you look at the energy situation in 2013, 2014, uh, most of our industries were shutting down because of the lack of uh, supply of uh, electricity. And there were no in new industries which were put up you know, uh, because of this factor. So this was a major uh, handicap as far as the industrial growth of Pakistan was concerned. So at that point in time, this energy uh, sector was identified as a priority number one. And for like 14 projects, as you have mentioned, mm. have been identified uh, to, to be constructed you know, sort of under CPEC. Mm. And those projects have, you know, sort of, added to our national grid after, uh, during the last 10 years. And they have really turned about the energy situation in Pakistan. Besides that, there had been some cleaner energy also uh, in terms of solar power and in terms of wind power. So this energy uh, input from CPEC into the uh, national uh, uh, grid has really boosted uh, the confidence of the investors into industrial sector. And besides that, overall uh, situation of energy in Pakistan has improved. And that has been a very crucial factor as far as Pakistan's uh, overall development was concerned. So uh, we have been able to achieve not only uh, stabilize our industrial uh, sector, but at the same time, across the nation, across the uh, country, we have been able to provide electricity, which is now a uh, requirement of, you know, sort of not only every household, but, you know, sort of every walk of life is largely depending on, on, on this energy. Dr. Tarat Shabir, China says it is ready to work with Pakistan to upgrade the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor and accelerate the building of an even closer China-Pakistan community with a shared vision and a shared future in the new era. What kind of a up an upgrade should we expect in the coming years? Uh, like what, what we, uh, you know, if we go, go back again, there were four pillars of CPAC when we started. Like uh, it was industrialization, it was energy, it was infrastructure, it was quadra. So, uh, and we, when we look at, at the timeline, you know, there was a timeline 2018, 2020, 2025, and 2030, which is now the uh, deadline for completion of CPAC projects. I, I think even if we are, you know, l lacking in uh, attaining the time frame, as long as we are in the right direction, I think it's okay. Such a gigantic project may have some, you know, problems with regard to uh, meeting the timeline. But uh, what is expected of both both the countries, and I think I've seen a resolve in both the countries' leadership that they want to push on with the existing projects of CPAC. They want to uh, push on the projects so that the uh, fruits of these projects uh, reach to the masses as soon as possible. And in some areas, we see that the the trickle down effect has already started. But you know, since it's a gigantic project, and you know, we had a very bad spell of COVID. Uh, mm. for two years uh, in, the, in the past that actually impeded the progress of CPAC. Uh, we, we can say that apart from uh, COVID, there was slight, uh, you know, capacity building required on our part, which, is, which was actually uh, done beforehand when we, we were embarking on such a big project. But I think both the countries are have resolved to complete the projects which are uh, underway. And you know the projects in the pipeline, <coughs> they also are working on those projects. And the biggest aim of these projects is socio-economic dividends that they expect from these projects. And those dividends are reaching to the people of Pakistan. And uh, you know, uh, for example, if uh, Pakistan is looking at job creation, Pakistan is looking at prosperity, Pakistan is looking at industrial development, Pakistan is looking at expansion of our export base. So. I think CPAC provides many of uh, its solutions. And uh, yeah, recent me fourth uh, meeting of uh, Joint Working Group uh, actually has shown this resolve, reflects the resolve of both countries that they both want to push on with the projects of CPAC. And they, 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 they want that they should be completed as soon as possible in order, to, uh, in order for its uh, fruits reaching to the people of Pakistan. Dr. Fazlur Rahman, uh, Dr. Talashivi pointed to challenges. Let me 
ask a bit more as far as the challenges are concerned. What have been the potential challenges in your point of view as far as China-Pakistan economic corridor is concerned? And of course, I'd like to add to it uh, the narrative being developed uh, about CPEC being a dead trap, then a persistent propaganda campaign also in certain parts of the media about the CPEC or the BRI being expansionist projects. What is your point of view on it? I think uh, BRI uh, is not at all an expansionist project. It's a connectivity project. And uh, uh, oh, in centuries, there is, uh, for the first time, that such kind of a global initiative has been initiated from an Asian country. And I think this is something which is uh, very unique, and we should really take pride in that, that our neighboring country, China, has launched this project. And this project is for the you know, benefit of the rest of the world in terms of connectivity, in terms of ease of trade, in terms of building infrastructure into especially the countries of the south where the infrastructure has been lacking and there is an infrastructural gap actually that needs to be bridged in order to bring them at par with, 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 the, with the north. So I think that this is a very unique and very, uh, you know, sort of a far-sighted project in terms of uh, development of overall, uh, you know, global economic system. Uh, so, and I think that you know sort of this this initiative doesn't pose any challenges. Mm. Uh, the challenges are some somehow you know sort of created in regional contexts or in domestic contexts. Uh, as far as the challenges to CPEC are concerned, I think primarily you know we can divide these challenges into two 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 areas. One is the external challenges. External challenges are the opposition of the hostile countries towards CPEC, which are trying to create problem and trying to make this project, you know, sort of uh, the, not to succeed. So they, you know, sort of we see uh, activities of sabotage, activities of, you know, terrorist attacks and such kind of activities which can impair the smooth working or smooth implementation of CPEC. The other challenges are from within. I, and I think those are some, some somewhat, you know, technical challenges in terms of, you know, sort of our own inter-ministerial coordination, in terms of our own taking ownership of certain projects in terms of implementing, you know, sort of our uh, part of the deal, you know, sort of in time, uh, in terms of facilitation of the Chinese companies to come and invest and things like that. So these challenges are uh, can be very easily overcome, and I think that you know, uh, with the passage of time, most of these challenges will be overcome. Uh, but certainly, the Chinese are much more concerned about the security aspect mm. of of, of uh, the situation, and I think that the security situation is not really that bad. And somehow the security element has been exaggerated or blown right. out of proportion. Right. Uh, security challenges are everywhere, you know, mm -hmm. sort of in, 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 in present day world. So I think that uh, we should uh, try to, you know, woo the Chinese investors to come and invest in Pakistan. And also the latest meeting, you know, sort of have identified that, you know, we should also invite like international actors also to come and play their due role in CPEC. All right. Now, speaking of the latest meeting, let's talk about it. Uh, Dr. Sarah, this should be the fourth meeting of the CPEC Joint Working Group in International Cooperation Coordination was held on the 21st of January this year. What has been the significance of this meeting in your point of view? Because it was held after after a couple of years, yeah. uh, and uh, what were the outcomes, and what kind of implications will it have for the future of CPEC and Park China <coughs> relations? Yes, it's uh, very important uh, uh, to analyze the <coughs> content of the meeting. You know, for the first, uh, first of all, the meeting actually concentrated on CPEC, and it was a, it was a kind of a review of uh, what what transpired in last last ten years. Uh, uh, there's a small component of the meeting in which our institute was also involved because the think tank cooperation that we have with the Kicker a think tank in uh, based in Beijing. Uh, we also discussed very uh, important issues with regards to CPAC, business situation, security, um, and future of CPAC. So I think it was a comprehensive meeting between, between the leadership of two countries, and the CPAC projects were reviewed. And international cooperation was also viewed like, uh, as Dr. Fazal Rahman mentioned, that uh, there is a, uh, you know, clearly mentioned that there's a third party participation prospects are also highlighted in the, in, in the, in the meeting, minutes of the meeting, that if a country other than Pakistan and China, since it's a bilateral project, so if a country other than Pakistan and China also wishes to invest in, in CPAC projects, it is very much possible for any country to come and invest in, in this. Provided you know both the, the the countries agree to what what is being uh, mm. you know what area is being chosen uh, by the third party, so 
I think it was a very fruitful meeting. And the, the important thing was that it reflected a resolve of the two countries with regards to pushing on, uh, you know, uh, on with CPEC. And the most importantly, wherever we go, people ask, it's, uh, you know, the CPEC has slowed down, you know, probably uh, the China has is having second thought about uh, CPEC. So this meeting displayed, this meeting reflected that Pakistan and China are on one page about CPEC, and they, both countries would like this project, th this, this big project between two countries be pushed uh, as far as uh, uh, f f possible, and they want to see it as a success. All right, the next question I'm going to pose to the both of you, and I'd like your answer on that. Uh, our caretaker prime minister, uh, while being interviewed by CGTN, our partner for this very important show, said, and I quote, we have already achieved the CPEX first phase and we are benefiting from its early harvest projects. We are entering the second phase. We do need more deliberations when it comes to the second phase. He also said the CPEX second phase required road and air connectivity around industrialization projects. My question to the both of you, beginning with you, Dr. Fazul Rahman, is how would you view the first decade of the CPEC? What have been the major achievements? And what is the outlook for the next decade? And how is and what is Pakistan exactly looking forward to as far as this is concerned? Has it assumed center stage in this relationship and in this project? I'll start with you, Dr. Fazul Rahman. I think definitely uh, CPEC has uh, taken the central stage in Pakistan-China bilateral relations and everything uh, which is part of our traditional bilateral cooperation collaboration is now directly or indirectly is connected to CPEC. And I think in the last 10 years, uh, the results or the outcome of CPEC uh, projects has been kind of a mix in which on some areas there has been satisfactory progress, but on so some other areas there has been not very, uh, not so satisfactory progress. So uh, in terms of energy, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of uh, uh, developing deeper understanding uh, how to go about, you know, sort of for the future projects, how to enter into the second phase, I think all those things have been achieved. But I think there has been some uh, slackness in terms of uh, creating s special economic zones because if you remember, you know, here at our end we have had a very, you know, different understanding of the special economic zones. We began with, you know, creating 29 and then came down to 19 and then to 9 and eventually now we are constructing four special economic zones. So that shows, you know, the kind of our understanding of the special economic zones because this is kind of a new area. These are not industrial states that we are used to in the past that we have created in the country. But this is something which is a very different concept and we this concept is being brought in uh, from our Chinese friends and we have to actually work very hard in terms of making all these uh, uh, special industri uh, industrial zones you know successful reason being that this will largely reflect on the success of CPEC because special industrial zones is an area which are going to create the jobs which are going to bring in technology which are going to absorb the relocation of uh, you know sort of uh, labor intensive industry from china so these are a v going to be very primary source of success of cpec at the same time a very primary source of overall industrial productivity so we have to really put uh, you know special emphasis on 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 these as far as the second phase uh, is concerned i think in second phase uh, we uh, are we are going to concentrate more on technological side on scientific cooperation in terms of uh, agricultural cooperation tourism uh, is uh, a very big and huge you know sort of sector uh, segment in which uh, the two countries can collaborate and cooperate. Education is another uh, one. And at the same time, there are like you know, so, so, uh, social development uh, projects which, which, which could be possibly you know, sort of undertaken uh, under CPEC, uh, which can enhance the people's uh, now because the infrastructure is already in place so they can enhance people's you know sort of livelihood in terms of producing in terms of taking things from uh, the, the producing mm. area to the market and things like that so there are several new opportunities which are going to come up in the second phase all right dr talat shabir first phase second phase what is pakistan looking forward to now and uh, has it assumed center stage now with the second phase uh, uh, as uh, dr fazalman mentioned uh, you know, the first two uh, components like uh, energy and infrastructure, a lot has been done. And ba basically that infrastructure, the first two components were to uh, support the third component that was industry. Hmm. Uh, and we are rightly pinning a lot of hopes to industrial development because we expect a lot of job creation. 
we uh, expect a lot of uh, exports to enhance because of this uh, industrialization phase and uh, the actually reg regional regional connectivity which is a you know one of the biggest big aims of uh, cpac is through industrialization because industrial development exports will connect uh, connect us with the regions so i think china and pakistan both are looking at at, at this component of uh, the cpac now uh, but for in order for having this phase as a success, I think we need to do, and uh, I, our Chinese friends also realize that there's a lot to be done in this in this area because we have not been able to actually grasp, as uh, Dr. mentioned, rightly mentioned, that concept of uh, special economic zone. Special economic zone is basically a facility for industries to locate themselves and uh, carry out production of uh, various product products and make them exportable and uh, you know energy infrastructure you know uh, infrastructure of a special economic zone is very important in order for things to be produced at a at a rate which is compatible to the world in order for us to enhance our exports <coughs> so there's a lot of deliberation being carried out on industrialization phase and we expect in future near future that a lot of industries to relocate in our country but i think uh, there's a very important point that we need to make uh, enabling environment in order for our industries to uh, to come to Pakistan. Like enabling environment means there has to be <coughs> proper infrastructure for for industries to work. There should be um, uh, plug and play uh, kind of uh, arrangement in the industrial zones. There should be facilitation in the industrial zone in our you know long lengthy NOCs processes that we have. We need to create enabling environment for. Chinese industries or elsewhere. Now we are talking of third-party participation. Mm. They would only invest in this country in if we make <coughs> uh, environment in, in our country very enabling for them to come and invest. All right, Professor Rahman, I'd like my question has two parts, and I'd uh, I like your point of view on that. Prime Minister, caretaker Prime Minister Anwarul Kakar says that we need uh, to further strengthen and benefit from the ecosystem of doing trade with one another. My first part of the question is what should be the outlines? to further uh, strengthen and broaden this ecosystem under the ambit of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. Secondly, I'd also like to understand uh, the fact that to build upon CPEC success, it is crucial to deepen cooperation between the two countries with joint research, technology transfer, and skill development program. What milestones have been achieved in this regard? Well, I think uh, so far, uh, you know, so the understanding has been uh, achieved between the two sides uh, in order to create uh, more uh, uh, eco-friendly, eco-trade uh, system in which, you know, uh, the, the, the sources of production and the uh, communication and uh, other elements which are associated with this should be uh, within the framework of uh, uh, kind of eco-friendly environment. C certainly, I think technology transfer and uh, scientific cooperation and joint research in several areas is required. Mm. And I think the two sides have already started this process, especially in terms of agriculture, especially in terms of, uh, uh, you know, advanced information technology uh, basis. The, the two countries are trying to collaborate. Uh, E-commerce is uh, another thing. Uh, digitalization of economy is another thing where the two countries can collaborate and cooperate. And as far as the skill development is concerned, I think uh, if you remember, there has been one uh, kind of uh, issue that Chinese are bringing their labor to Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And that was the reason because the Pakistani labor was not really compatible with the Chinese standards which they required uh, in order to work on their projects. So I think at, from that point onward, they have started trying to develop some kind of a system in Pakistan where the skills needs uh, could be developed. Mm. So uh, one of the Chinese uh, international organization, which is uh, Tang uh, International Education Organization, is uh, now helping uh, around 40, 50 Pakistani universities, mm. and they are trying to introduce specifically skill-related programs, uh, and also they are introducing split de degree programs mm. that students can study two years here, one year in China, and on specific skills. So I think that a lot of things are uh, in the pipeline and All there right. are a lot of things are moving and eventually this is going to be a more comprehensive picture which will emerge after a few years. Wonderful. Dr. Talish, should be last question as far as this show is concerned. It has also two aspects and I'd like a short and but very uh, uh, concise answer to that. Firstly, uh, how do you see this transformative journey of CPEC serving as an inspiration 
for other nations seeking to forge strategic partnership for sustainable development. My second part of the question is, by aligning with global economic trends, do you feel that Pakistan and China can leverage the CPEC to thrive in a contemporary world economic order? Uh, if I say and know precisely that uh, I think CPEC, which is a bilateral framework project between China and Pakistan, uh, is not a project that that you know is it refers to Pakistan and China, but it's a it's a good model for regional connectivity. You know, w first of all, we say this is a hinge between Belt and Road of uh, China's you know vision. So I think uh, uh, we, uh, by developing on CPEC, we can create a regional connectivity framework for the countries of the regions to mm. follow. Mm. Uh, I think uh, the model, if uh, the CPEC becomes a success, then mm. I think uh, uh, the other corridors that China is thinking or other initiatives, you know, there are three initiatives of China, uh, you know, unleashed uh, recently, they will also get in, you know strengthened uh, by the success of CPEC. You know CPEC that is what they call it a pilot project because they expect this project to succeed and they can build on you know uh, their development models on this project. Given that we both uh, work very hard to uh, mm -hmm. to make it a success. Thank you very much to both of my guests, Dr. Fazlur Rahman as well as Dr. Talat Shabir, to have joined us to have given us your valuable input. And of course, your point of view as far as China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, the first decade and what we should look forward to as far as the next decade is concerned. I feel the relationship between both the countries is extremely important and the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor comes to be one of the hallmarks of that relationship since the last 10 years. So a lot of eyes are, are on it, a lot of good eyes, a lot of bad eyes are on it as well. So uh, I think uh, we need to, uh, how should I say that, uh, come up to the challenge and uh, do the needful so that tomorrow uh, CPAC is indeed looked upon by all other strategic partners as that hallmark project that created a new chapter as far as Pakistan-China relations are concerned. I'd like, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of it all, to also thank uh, my Chinese side of uh, this uh, show, uh, my co-anchor, Yang Chang Shi, to have joined us, and uh, CGTN for their collaboration as far as this important program is concerned. And also, uh, I'd like to end uh, with one quote and a little uh, thing. We're uh, known as the RN brothers, China and Pakistan. And uh, as far as Pakistan side is concerned, and I'm sure the Chinese side also uh, means the same, uh, this uh, iron brother uh, friendship that we have had has been the priority of our diplomacy as fair as also the Chinese diplomacy. There's a Chinese proverb that says, be not afraid of growing slowly, be afraid only of standing still. That is I, how I would like to uh, describe the relationship between both the countries of which the CPEC is going to be that hallmark project as it has been for the last 10 years. With that, we come to an end of this very special show. I'd like to thank our Chinese viewers and our Pakistani viewers to have joined us for this Pakistan-China's Dosti Zindabad. Allah Hafiz. <laughs>